everyone it's been a long time since my last video because i was on the mission impossible trying to get one of the most expensive piece of paper i've ever had the german driver's license though i already have two driver's licenses one in china the other one in america believe it or not according to golf the chinese driver's license is actually the most difficult to get i do remember doing all the stunts like driving over manhole covers and skinny wooden bars and crazy things like that but the german one for me is the most expensive complicated time consuming and energy draining especially when i wanted to challenge myself by doing it from scratch Usually, if you already have a driver's license from another country, you could check with your local autonomous armed or builder armed just to see if you could convert your driver's license directly. Or you just need some lessons or pass an actual theory or practical test before you can convert. And when it means convert, it's no joke. They will literally take away your current one before giving you the German one. I thought I didn't want to go through that process, you know, contacting those offices, making appointments, which are usually a nightmare here in Bavaria. So I decided to do it from scratch, which turned out to be probably the worst decision I've ever made. So anyway, today I want to give you a step-by-step -step timeline of how I got mine in Nuremberg, so you wouldn't suffer from the pain I experienced. Other cities might be different, and I've heard it's much easier in small towns or villages. So let's jump right into it. Step 1. Find a driving school. It makes a huge difference to your entire driving license obtaining experience, so I encourage you to do some good research here to understand their class schedule, how they charge you, and if they have packages. Some charge by the hour, some charge extra fees for different services. Here you definitely need to be extremely careful. Unfortunately, I was a bit lazy, so I just dropped by one that close to where I live. They put a poster outside saying they offer in English, even though that's not true at all. All my communication classes with the school are in German. I know quite a few friends who switched driving schools either because they didn't get along with their coach, because they didn't like the cars, or they felt like they were being ripped off. I was just too lazy to switch. I got stuck with the same one for the next one and a half years. Anyway, for my driving school, I walked in, signed up, and paid for a package. Then I got a software login for the simulation test and a theory class schedule and a book with a checklist. Then based on the checklist, I started to collect all the things listed there, which led to step two. Take the first aid class and eye test. Your driving school could arrange that for you or you could simply find one by yourself. I did it on my own to have more options and the flexibility. I just googled as to have a course to feel a shine, Nuremberg, and then a bunch of results showed. I chose the one ADAC offered because it's close to where I live and offers a good program. In Germany, failure to assist in an accident is illegal, though it takes a whole day, about eight hours. I think it's worth it. You get to learn how to perform CPR, how to use a defibrillator, how to bandage arms, etc. Various for information. Plus, you can also make some new friends. At the end of the day, they give you a quick eye test, then you receive two certificates, then done. Step 3. Register at your local Ordnungsamt. Depending on the city you live in, you can either do it online, or walking, or just to make an appointment. Then you need to bring your certificates from the first aid course, eye test result, and passport picture, and then fill out an application form where you need to put the name of your driving school, then you're all set. This step is very, very important, otherwise your driving school will not be able to register you for the test. Step 4. Finish your theory classes. You can start theory classes immediately after you pay for your driving school. For my school, it's two hours every evening from Monday to Friday for three weeks altogether, 28 hours. Some serious commitment here, but again, it was quite fun. It's like back to middle school, you learn physics formulas to calculate distance and time. You see a lot of pictures to learn about the science and you watch some films to learn about different driver's behaviors. Take the class seriously because there are quite a few things in Germany that might be different from the country you are from. For example, right before left. Also, if you don't speak German, try to at least understand the words on some of the signs. Step 5. Pass the theory test. 
After you finish the mandatory theory lessons, you can ask your driving school to register for your theory test and find an appointment at the local TUV, T -U -V, Technische Überlassungsverein, or English, Technical Inspection Association. Take this test very serious. It's very different from the common sense single choice paper test in America. The theory test in Germany is no joke. It is conducted on a tablet and has many types of questions that will blow your mind. For example, the number questions. Either something you need to calculate for the distance and time, etc., or a number you need to remember, for example, the minimum tire tread depth. Here you need to put in the exact number. Then the video question. A simulation video is played, and based on that situation, you need to answer multiple choice questions. There may be more than one correct answer, and you need to take them all. What's trickier is that you really need to pay 100% attention to all the mirrors and windows shown in the video. There could be a biker suddenly jumping out of nowhere, or something super tiny appears. If you didn't see them, you would give a wrong answer. Another thing to keep in mind that if you take the test in English, and yes, they do offer the test in many languages. However, it's British English. There might be words that are different from American English. I still remember I spent quite a lot of time trying to figure out what carriageways means. So yeah, I failed the first time as I did not take this so serious. After that, I came back home, tried to finish all the questions in the simulation test app and did the test nearly a hundred times. Then my second theory test, I got 100% correct. Oh, by the way, no matter whether you failed or passed the test, you will receive a bill in your letterbox from TOOF and don't forget to pay. It's a fee not covered by the driving school. Step six, practice driving. You might think you're already an experienced driver and don't need to practice much. Well, passing the test and driving in daily life are quite different. Starting the day when you pass the theory test, you have one year to pass the practical test. Otherwise, you have to start over. One year seems pretty long, but I encourage you to plan it wisely. First, you need to finish the 12 mandatory driving hours. Make sure that you have checked all the required training, including driving at night, driving on highways, etc. Your coach should have a list. You want to see if she or he has checked all the boxes. Second, pay attention to what examiners care about the most. For example, the so-called shooter blink means to look back over your shoulder. You really need to make that gesture very clear and long enough so that the examiner can see that. Third, get familiar with the roads near where you will take the test. The test is about 45 minutes of driving around Tooth, so if there are any tricky roads or signs near there, practice driving there and get comfortable with it. Your coach should share with you some experiences they have. Fourth, know your car. Before the practical test, the examiner will ask you some questions about the car. For example, where is the emergency brake? How to change the oil? How's the condition of the tires? When should you send the car to inspection? So again, ask your coach for the list of the usually asked questions and memorize the answers in German. Step seven, pass the test. After finishing the mandatory hours, it's up to your driving school whether you can take the test. Yep, you didn't hear it wrong. That's where they can make extra money. They can keep saying that you're not ready and you need to take more classes and pay more money. So negotiate with them and try to get a slot that you're comfortable with. I would recommend doing that in the early morning before the rush hours because there will be less traffic on the road and also the examiners might have a better mood after their first coffee in the morning. So have a good sleep the night before, take a deep breath, and try to nail the test. Of course, there can be a lot of luck factors also, you know, depending on whether you get a nice examiner. I didn't have much luck and being an Asian woman made it even worse. I failed two times, very expensive mistakes. Again, no matter where you pass or fill the test, you will receive the bill from TOOF that you need to pay. Also, you will receive a feedback email telling you how your performance was in different tasks, junction entry, crosswalks, or roundabouts, things like that, and different competence, how good your judgment of the traffic, whether you are conscious of the environment, and where you need to improve. Yep, very detailed information. I mean, of course, that's what you paid for. Finally, step eight, 
waiting. Natürlich, all the good things take time in Germany. You will get a piece of paper after you pass the test. You can use this paper in combination with your ID card to drive only in Germany until you finally get your plastic driver's license card in your mail, which probably takes another one to two months. And here it is. It was absolutely a long journey. It was draining my patience, energy, and wallet. So my best advice for you, if you want to drive in Germany without those troubles, get a driver's license in another country that could directly convert. And if not, have a good attitude, watch this video and subscribe to my channel. And by the way, I'm trying to make more shorts now and fewer long videos. So follow me on TikTok and Instagram where you find more videos on things to do in Germany, some um, life tips here and clips of my stand-up comedy shows. And I will see you there. Cheers!